Jared here from Power Equipment Direct, and this is everything you need to know about portable generators. We're going to show you how to run it, maintain it, and troubleshoot it. We're even going to show you how to connect it into your home. Let's get started. A question we get a lot is how often should I maintain my generator? Now, this includes oil changes and air filters, spark plugs, as we went over, but this is all going to be determined by the manufacturer. It'll be usually found in the owner's manual, but you can reference the manufacturer directly if need be. I would say average oil change duration is anywhere between 100 to 200 hours of operation, or annually. Now, if it's a brand new generator, it may have a break-in period. The manufacturer may suggest that the oil be changed within the first 25 hours. After that, it's usually every 100 to 200 hours, depending on the make. This is going to be determined by the manufacturer, and it'll be in the owner's manual and you will want to reference that for any additional maintenance on the generator. For today's demonstration, we've ordered a maintenance kit from our website. This kit is going to include an air filter, spark plug, paper towel, and funnel. And in our application, an oil filter. You're also going to want to make sure that you get the correct weight oil for your generator. So a question we get a lot is what weight oil should I use in my generator? Generally, this is going to depend on the temperature that it's ran in. 10W30 is the most common weight oil, but if you are in colder temperatures, you may want to do a 5W30. When choosing the correct oil for your generator, you're going to want to refer to the owner's manual. Some are going to have 10W30, some maybe 5W30, but this is going to be dependent on the manufacturer. Also, it may call for synthetic or a semi-synthetic type oil. Please refer to your owner's manual for this. So in addition to the maintenance kit, you're going to need a few extra things. You're going to need an oil pan or some type of oil storage container for disposing of your used oil. On top of that, you're going to need a few tools. Now, depending on the, the manufacturer and the generator, you may need things like a flathead screwdriver and a basic ratchet set. These can all be found at a local hardware store. Now, for storage of the generator, we recommend using a fuel stabilizer inside of it. You're going to want to drain the fuel out and add this in so that it leaves a nice film on the inside of the generator. On top of that, any fuel that you have in a gas tank or laying around the house, you're going to need to add some stabilizer to that if you don't plan to use it within 30 days. If your generator has electric start, the first thing you're going to want to do is disconnect the battery cable. This will prevent it from starting while you're doing maintenance. So with the maintenance on a generator, again, first thing you want to check is the fuel. Make sure, number one, that there's fuel in the generator and it's less than 30 days old. Fuels nowadays usually take about 30 days for them to break down due to ethanol. Next, we're going to check the air filter. The air filter assembly comes apart and inside will be the filter. You want to look at that filter and make sure that it does not look dirty or clogged. Uh, some people can bang it out on the floor, get some of the dirt out of it, but it is always recommended to just replace the filter. So with removing the air filter, on this unit it does have screws that hold in the air box, but some may just have clips that hold it on. We're going to want to pull this off, and the air, air filter just falls right out. Looks like it's got a little bit of oil leaking from somewhere, but we're going to replace it anyway. Now you can tell between the two air filters, this one is much cleaner. So we're going to replace this. So with the air filter, you're going to want to make sure that the flat side is facing you, and that this gasket is sealing properly when you're placing it in there. You're not going to want to force it in. So with air filters, it's an as-needed item. Your owner's manual will tell you when it's required. One thing to make sure, if it is a thread-on item, don't thread it too much as you might cross-thread it or strip the plastic threads. Next thing we want to check is the oil. We want to check cleanliness and we also want to check the oil level. The reason we're doing this before changing the oil is to make sure that the oil level is high. If it's lower, that may mean that the generator is burning oil and might have issues down the line. So on this particular model, there's no dipstick, but it does state in the manual that the oil needs to be at the thread line. So this unit actually looks like it's a little over full. So we're going to drain this oil and put fresh oil back in it. Well, on this particular generator, it has an oil drain tube. Others may have a drain plug. Either way, you're going to want to have an oil pan underneath it. We're going to open up the drain tube on this you're going to know that it's completely empty when it stops dripping oil. Next, on this model, we're going to replace the oil filter. 
before installing the new oil filter, lightly lubricate the oil filter gasket with the fresh oil. Now we're going to add the fresh oil. Make sure that you're adding the correct amount to your generator. So the next thing we're going to change is the spark plug. If you don't plan to change that out, you're at least going to want to check the gap. This can be found in your owner's manual. So we pulled the spark plug out. It doesn't look too bad, but it looks like it's running a little rich. So we're going to replace this. So we have our brand new spark plug here. As you can see, much cleaner, much nicer. Now with the new spark plug, it may come pre-gapped, but you're going to want to make sure that that gap is the correct size for your particular machine. So the spec on our generator is 30 thousandths, and we've got our gap tool here, and we've made sure that it fits right at spec. Now we're going to install the new plug. Make sure you refer to your owner's manual for the correct torque spec when tightening this down. So one of the most overlooked things on a generator is going to be the spark arrester. Now you're going to want to pull this off and clean it in some solvent. This is going to help it last much, much longer. It can be found on the muffler, usually held on by a small clamp. This generator is an electric start, meaning that it does have a battery on board. This particular model has a charging port on the front for a wall charger. You're going to want to plug this in and keep it charged for a 24 hour period. After that, you'll unplug it and it should store for at least 30 days. With any generator, you can always run into some issues. Here's some troubleshooting tips to help you out. With any combustion engine, there are four main things that you need. Fuel, spark, air, and compression. Any one of these four can cause an engine to not start. Uh, old gas, bad gas, you know, water in your gas. That is the first thing to check. Nine times out of 10, people will use either old gas or the gas in the tank has gone bad over time. After that, you definitely wanna check your air filter, make sure that that's not clogged. If an air filter gets clogged, it's gonna restrict the amount of airflow going into the carburetor. Air filters tend to get dirty and that's gonna restrict the air intake, which is gonna cause the generator not to start. Next thing to check would be your spark plug. If a spark plug is fouled out from the bad gas or it's got a crack in the porcelain, this can cause it not to work properly and the generator will definitely not start. One of the features of portable generators nowadays is a low oil shutdown. Now what can happen is the generator will start up and after a few seconds just shut down. Checking the oil and making sure that it has the proper level is key with any generator. A question that I get all the time is, my generator runs, but it doesn't produce any electricity. Now there can be a multitude of reasons that this is happening, but there's usually two. One, the main breaker on the generator is not on the on position. That is by far <laughs> the most common issue. But second, some people will let the generator sit and not run these every once in a while. The generator has a magnet in the side of it, and that magnet needs to be ran so that it can keep its charge. Over time, when that magnet sits, it can lose its charge and the generator will not produce electricity. A lot of the troubleshooting issues that we run into are due to improper storage. Now, this is going to include the gasoline again, not using a fuel treatment, and also the battery. The battery again is very key on these to keep charged and always running the generator. Some generators will have electric start. That means that it'll have a battery on board to start up the engine. If that's not charged, some will have a recoil backup, but some larger units will not have that option. Now, the battery will either charge while the generator is running, or the generator will come with a charger for that battery. If you do store it over the winter, you're gonna wanna either remove that battery and put it on a trickle charger, or make sure that you're running it ever so often. So running these every month or every couple of months is key to keeping your generator healthy.